Welcome here to my first ever YouTube video, a knitting podcast. My name is Josie. I am a 28 year old, uh, a wife, a mama to a one year old, um, and I really enjoy crafting. Uh, knitting especially is my first love. I started knitting at the beginning of COVID. So the summer of 2020 and I have just fallen in love and I've just now gotten in to some garments and I wanted to share, I wanted to share my journey. I love YouTube um, knitting podcasts and really wanted to be a part of it, to get in the knitting community, knitting podcast community, um, looking for knitting friends and also for more experienced knitters that can help me with problems that I run into. So yeah, I think we'll follow the normal knitting podcast uh, layout. So I'll go through the uh, finished objects, whips, acquisitions, and then I'll ha I have other crafts that I would love to share. And so I'll timestamp everything below, but I'll also have some sewing, punch needle, and talk about those crafts. And then at the end, I think I'll include a little life, um, a life favorite things that I've been watching, reading. I really love those segments and other podcasts. I feel like I get to know the other YouTubers um, that way. And so if you're interested and want to get to know me more, uh, stick around for that segment too, but everything will be timestamped. Um, I have notes here, so if I look down, it's because I'm looking at notes. For this first one, I think I'll just do January and February, what I finished for January and February. So my first thing that I finished was this beautiful Cavendish, I think is how you pronounce it, wrap. It's by Dahlia and Bloom. I'll leave it, I'll leave everything in the description box, but it has this really pretty herringbone pattern. And if that's not in focus, I'll overlay some images, but and it's triangle shaped. Um, this was, this is, took me forever. It took me over a year. Um, the pattern calls for Aran weight yarn and I used DK. Knowing it was a shawl, knowing I didn't really have to meet gauge, it's definitely not as large as I would have wanted, but that's okay. It's really soft. It's a Barocco. Barocco Remix, I believe. I'll leave it below as well. But yeah, this took me forever. I just lost so much motivation throughout knitting this because, you know, you, I, for this pattern, you cast on here and then you increase this way. And so it's just, it just gets larger and larger. And by the end of it, it was taking me like, over a half hour to do a row. This is my first shawl, so that was just forever. But it's so worth it. I love it. I finished it in January. I'm, I live in the Midwest, so it's like a decent, well, this winter has been unseasonably warm, but usually it's quite cold. And this has just been so fun to wear as a scarf or just like a simple, like layer it. It's nice and warm and cozy and really soft. I just love the texture. I had some trouble blocking this. Um, as, you, as you can see, it's very, well, I'm gonna hold it up. Can you see the way, like the waviness in the border? Like here? Yeah, so her, her picture is like a pristine line, a pristine edge, just very sharp, and I blocked this really hard, um, stretched it to get to her dimensions, which now that I'm thinking about that, I maybe should not have done that since it, she used Aaron and I used DK. But no, I knitted, I knitted to the same length that she did, so that was fine. Anyway, I used a bind off, a lace bind off for shawls, and I think I just did it way too loose. Like the lace bind off itself is stretchy, 
because it's a lace bind off and I think I just didn't do it at my normal tension I did it even looser and so I had that it like rolls in on itself um, so when I wear it over my back it's not a perfect triangle it's not like crisp and lace flat it curls but it's I wear it anyway and then when I wear it as a scarf that like curled edge doesn't bother me at all it's super cozy super warm uh, when I go out in it in public and like coffee houses and libraries this is what I take with me to keep on my shoulders while I knit and I love it so worth it I really like halfway through before I started my I guess before halfway through before I started my second ball I was seriously debating like ripping it out because I just wasn't enjoying it but I'm so glad I kept it my husband told me you just need to push through you just need to keep it and I'm so glad I did it's the biggest thing the thing that has taken me the longest and there was like a long break of not knitting it like probably eight months of not working on it at all which is another reason why it took so long but it's beautiful and I really want to knit another one this did not scar me from big scary knitting projects shawls I really wanted to knit another one I want to knit a larger one that is just like a wearable blanket a lovely yarn YouTube podcast I forget her name but a lovely yarn has talked about that she likes to knit or crochet granny square blankets and then she'll like fold it from tip to tip so it makes a big triangle and then it's like double thick extra squishy and I think that would be really fun I don't crochet but knitting would be really fun to have like a just ultra squishy uh, blanket square blanket that you can make a shawl but yeah love this pattern it was hard but it was good not hard it was written just fine it was just hard because it uh, I lost motivation <laughs> um, the next thing that I did marked off the to-do list was fixing my first ever pair of socks that I finished over a year ago that I never wore because I made a mistake while knitting it I used the Summerly I'm so basic socks um, it's a free pattern I'm, I believe and I don't know this yarn I bought it two years ago when I first started knitting uh, I'll look on my Ravelry page to see if I happen to list the yarn but so yeah it's it's a really pretty um, red rougey orangey sock color the problem was I knit when I did the first pair of sock or sorry when I did the first sock I knit it way too long and so there was like an, an inch of extra fabric and I was a newer knitter and didn't really understand that you could go back while it was like before binding off before doing the kitchener stitch I didn't understand so I just went ahead and bound off and then I started the second and I made the second one to the proper length but they were unwearable they were way too long and I was just scared whenever I wanted to go back and fix it I watched enough knitting podcasts by that time to know that you could go back and you could fix but I was too scared so January was here and after finishing the big wrap I had nothing and I, I was out of budget and couldn't buy any more yarn until February so I was scrounging around for uh, in my scraps but I saw these and I thought I really want to wear these and so I needed to fix them so I counted I did I counted how many rows on the foot for the correct pair of socks picked up stitches in the correct row for the long pair of sock or the long sock and re decreased for the toe and re kitchener stitched and they fit great it took me oh, I don't know two hours and I waited for so long probably two years not not two years uh, probably a year though a year and I wear them all the time they're a little fuzzy a little pilly a little pilly but they're so fun I love wearing them and they're warm they are loose 
they do loosen up like throughout the day and so I think I, I used a 1.5 needle and I think I should have used a US one with this with the same stitch count so that's what I'll do next for my next pair of socks but yeah love them wear them all the time okay the next thing another looking through my scraps to try and find something to knit this was pretty funny I it's made with uh, we are knitters the petite wool I got a sweater kit from them and this was just all the leftover yarn I thought how nice to make like a little blanket and I was even thinking a car seat blanket for my son uh, that would be warm but I really wanted to practice continental knitting uh, I've I'm English knitter I flick with my right hand but I really wanted to practice practice continental knitting um, so I knew that I was only going to use like continental knitting on this project and so I tried to calculate I wanted a close to a square but was totally okay if it was like two foot by three foot but I just didn't know how many stitches to cast cast on and so I tried to calculate with the, the yardage basically my scrappy blanket became a scrappy scarf <laughs> um, yeah the width is correct I thought four four foot when I did my calculations, I've got four foot for width and then five foot for like height. And it's like a foot high. I don't know. I don't know if I messed up. I don't know if it didn't take into account. I probably just didn't take into account that, you know, knitting like compresses the rose shrink. It is not a blanket. I left the ends out so if I decide to take it out and redo it then I can but right now I've just been wearing it as a scarf I just I don't have any wool scarves and I just tuck in the ends and it's great I knitted it with long tail cast on and just a standard bind off all in continental knitting and I'm very happy with the tension it's given me a lot of confidence to keep trying. The yarn's not my favorite. It breaks easy and it was so easy to split. I'm not too comfortable or I'm, I'm not just, I'm just not used to handling the yarn continental style. And so I just was splitting so many stitches. But by the end, con continental knitting was getting very easy for me. Or more natural, it just felt more natural. So super fun. And it's really warm for the cold winter days here where we go out walking. And I loved that I got rid of all my scraps from that sweater project. But definitely not how I envisioned it. <laughs> my scrappy blanket, scrappy scarf. I have one other finished object from early February, I believe. And it's downstairs, so I'm going to run and grab it. And I just pray that I'm going to sit in the same spot. Okay, I'm back. Hopefully I'm in the same spot. But I made little mittens. <laughs> They're so cute. Okay, for my husband for Christmas, I really wanted to knit the Musselburg. Musselburg, Musselboro. I've heard it both ways. I've been pronouncing it Musselburg. Hat. Um, and so I used knit picks, um, Wool of the Andes, and Sport Weight and bought too much had like a ball and a half left and wanted to use that like the smaller ball and so i looked on ravelry and found a free pattern i'll link it and they were just so cute my, my son he's one and a half so he doesn't really need the thumb holes but i just thought they were cute if you can tell they like cinch in here with a rapid decrease and then a rapid increase row and they do not come off his little hands. It's fantastic. When I first put them on, he, you know, was like looking at them like on his hands and then he tried to shake them off and they stayed on. It was super easy. 
I think each one took me a day and of not continuing with knitting. But yeah, super cute. They keep his hands warm when we go out on walks. Very cute. Uh, those were all my finished objects for January and February. And then I bought new yarn February 1st when the new budget when our new budget started and cast it on some whips and so I want to show you. Um this is another Musselberg um, for myself. I really have been loving this emerald green color and I looked what felt for what felt like for a long time. I had a lot of time to look in January because I wasn't gonna buy it until February. I ended up buying this from Hill Country Weavers in Austin. I visited there in October and really loved that store and so it was fun to be able to buy online from them. But it's Life in the Long Grass. You see it's very like emerald green. Sometimes it looks quite forest, forest green. Other times it looks a little blue, but it's called Emerald Eve, Life in the Long Grass. It's their light fingering yarn. I'm having a blast knitting this. I started knitting it on US 3 and just wasn't liking the fabric. Thought it was a little bit too airy. And my like, my cast on and then my increases were just too messy. And so I got, I finished the increases probably got to like an inch past the crown and then was like I just really don't like it with the US size 3 so I ripped it back I took it out and have and re knit it with US size 2 and I'm loving the fabric so much more yeah it's my second one it's my first one in fingering yarn that like I said I knitted for my husband in sport weight for Christmas but I'm loving it. This is so fun, so easy, just kind of mindless stockinette stitch for rounds and rounds. My plan is to not, is to just knit until it's all gone. I weighed it after the crown and believed I used four grams, four or six, I can't remember. I have it written down. So my plan is to just knit until 10 grams and then decrease and so I can use it all up instead of knitting to her recommended length. And hopefully I'll be able to, you know, once you tuck in the hat into the, the end to end, I'm hoping I'll be able to fold it up and have like quadruple layers around the ear. But it's so fun. I'm having a blast. I have a cute little stitch marker that like the green really matches the hat really well. Love the color, love the yarn. This is my second time using this yarn. The first time using it, um, I knitted I knitted a pair of socks for my mom and had no troubles. This time, I feel like I'm getting a little bit of like wooly pieces in the yarn. Uh, I, don't, I haven't gotten that much and I still love the yarn and will definitely still buy this yarn, but yeah. Love it, love it. Yeah, my second whip is the Mountain Walk Socks by Handmade by Florence. Um, it's using Cascade Heritage. Let me see. Yes, Cascade Heritage. It's their 75 25, 75% uh, superwash wool and 25% nylon sock base. I got it in. I think Dusty Orchid. I believe Dusty Orchid. Bought it from Lovecrafts, that website. It's definitely more purple than I thought it would be. Um, but I'm knitting these for my sister. She picked out the yarn and picked out the pattern. And it's my first pattern by uh, handmade by Florence. Love her YouTube channel and her knitting podcasts. But I haven't knitted a pattern by hers before and I really love those socks that she just came out with that pattern recently. Can't, can't remember how long but so 
I am not having the most fun time knitting these. I just, just cast them on two or three days ago. And it's a pretty, let me, let me show you. A pretty like mock cable pattern is what she calls it. I've done cables once in a hat and really enjoyed it. Um, so I was interested to try mock cable pattern. Uh, she knits this on Magic Loop. She says it's written for Magic Loop, but you can adapt it for like double pointed needles or smaller circular needles. But it is just hurting my hands so badly. I've used nine inch circulars for my mom's socks uh, that I just knit like a few months ago with a Life in the Long Grass yarn. And loved it, absolutely loved it. Yeah, I just knew that, okay, I am knitting socks on nine inch circular needles. And so when I got the pattern, I just was gonna adapt it. And so I have this big green one for beginning of round and then this small blue one for um, my halfway point. She divides the pattern as for needle one and needle two. So it just helped me to read the pattern. But yeah, it is just very hard. Like casting on and then knitting into that first cast on edge was just, Ooh, I was stretching the yarn so hard and it was just very hard to knit in and I think uh, Kay from Crazy Sock Lady, she talks about that in her 9 inch um, knitting socks on 9 inch circular videos tutorial. She says that sometimes she will knit the first row from the cast on, like cast on and then knit the first row on Magic Loop and then move them to 9 inch circulars and I understand because it was so difficult to knit to that first row. But then, you know, you knit a little rolled edge and it was just easy peasy knitting uh, after that. And then you start the ribbing portion, the ribbing pattern that's gonna be the whole leg and then, you know, you'll do the heel and then the whole top of the foot is that ribbing pattern. And with the ribbing compressing, it is just not comfortable for me to knit on these nine inch circulars. So I think I'm gonna buy a 32 inch size one um, so I can do magic loop, I can move to magic loop and I'm hoping that will be much more comfortable to be able to do the mock cables and with the ribbon compressing, hopefully I have no more issues. But I'm really loving the pattern, it's looking so pretty, I'm excited to have a whole sock that looks like this. Well, they'll be given to my sister, but <laughs> I'm excited. Yeah, beautiful sock pattern. Okay, um, so in the month of February, I bought a few different yarns. I, the Cascade Heritage for the Mountain Walk socks was new. So was the Musselberg um, yarn, the Life in the Long Grass, that was new. And then I bought two other yarns and I haven't cast on those projects yet. This is the first one. So beautiful. This is um, by Bad Cheap Yarn. It's hand dyed in Alaska. It's mushroom is the colorway. I bought this for my mom. I think she's gonna love it. My mom loves Alaska, loves the outdoors, and loves mushrooms. So it's just so perfect. I'm just gonna knit vanilla socks, nine inch circulars, crazy sock lady socks. I really want to show off the yarn. I think my mom really like it. She loved the first pair of socks I knit her and so uh, her birthday's coming up. Saw this yarn and knew that I really wanted to buy it for her. So hopefully next time you're here there's more to see like actually worked into a sock. And the other yarn I bought was Valley Yarns. I bought it from Love Crafts. 100% wool. Valley Yarns, 100% wool. Northampton is the base, is what the base is called. The color is charcoal. It's definitely black. It looks, let me see, it looks black. It's not maybe pitch black, but I was thinking it would be more dark gray and it definitely looks black, but I won't mind. I have two store-bought cardigans that I want to 
replace with knitting ones. Um, and this is to replace my dark gray one. So I bought seven balls of these. They're, they're 100 grams. My intention is to knit the oversized seasons cardigan. Uh, half fisherman's rib. Have never done half fisherman's rib. The pattern is, the pattern description does say it's skilled, which has me a little nervous. I definitely wouldn't call my call myself a skilled knitter, but a part of me is like, I'll just knit it as I go. I'll figure it out as I go. If it takes me six months, it takes me six months. I very much just love to knit and would love to have the end product, but since it's already March, like winter's almost over, spring's almost here. I think it will just be, there's no rush basically to get it done. I think I can knit on it slowly and enjoy it. It's a really affordable yarn. I'll list on the screen how much it's like selling for, but it was very affordable for 100% wool. And I was nervous buying wool yarn online, not being able to feel it, just because I really like soft yarn. But it's very soft, still a little scratchy, but I think with washing that it will just get softer and softer. It's what I've been told. I was watching Martina from We Grow Wild, her YouTube channel, and she was saying that, you know, she'd never done brioche before, but she's working on this project. She was like, it's so easy. Why is everyone so scared? That's how I feel. I don't need to be afraid. <laughs> so that wraps up the knitting portion of this YouTube podcast, of the knitting podcast, but I do want to talk about my other crafts if you're interested. So the first one, was this little measuring holder, uh, measuring spoon holder. I did not follow a pattern. You can see it's a little crooked and the back's not neat at all, but um, we just, we wanted, my husband really wanted to be able to get spoons out easier. And so this just hangs in, on the inside of our spice cabinet. It's nice. It's definitely not what I wanted. I tried, my plan was to make it much larger and so have the whole holder, you know, go around the spoons, but I messed up in my, my graph calculations and it turned out much smaller, but it works and we really like it. It's very practical and it's cute. Yeah, so that was my first sewing finished object. Um, my other crafty finished object is this punch needle that my sister-in-law got me. I really wanted some a punch needle kit for Christmas. I've tried embroidery before and I just, I didn't enjoy it. There was something about it, it was so small, it took forever, very slow progress. I just didn't enjoy it, but I really love the look of punch needle. And so I wanted to give it a shot um, and I finished it and it was so quick. So quick at least compared to embroidery. But I have no idea what to do with this. It doesn't match our home decor. So I don't know what to do. If you've done punch needle before, let me know what you do with yours. I'm thinking about just, you know, finishing it, putting it in like a pretty wooden hoop that's like meant for a display and maybe just leaving it around our house and seeing where it would look good. But yeah, it's pretty, but I don't know what to do with it. So let me know if you have any ideas. And then some work in progress are some coasters. I've done five, just fa uh, fabric from Joann's little coasters, two pieces of fabric with batting in between. I'm following a YouTube video instructions. I'll link it. I just have two more. Uh, sewing hasn't been as relaxing as I wanted it to be. It's not as, it's just, I, get, I can get frustrated with it, <laughs> unfortunately especially when the thread gets tangled and it feels like I've done everything right. I just have two left. I need to finish. I bought... The only thing I bought was this large, large twin flat bed sheet from Goodwill. So it was a very affordable. It's like flannel, flannel material, very soft, 100% cotton. 
my goal is to make is to use it as like a practice for the Helen's Closet Arden Pants. I really love that pattern. I really am just I really love the idea of making a lot of home goods for our house, making our house feel homemade, make it cozy and comfy and welcoming. But I also love love the idea of making a lot of my clothes um, through knitting and also sewing. But I'm just I'm not skilled enough. To, I don't feel skilled enough to start sewing my own clothes. I've tried a little onesie before for my son and it was bad. I didn't even finish because I like put a hole in the fabric. It was bad, did not enjoy it. So my hope is to make Arden pants low pressure because the fabric was so cheap. And I hope I enjoy it. I really want to sew. I have patterns in mind that I want to sew. In my Make Nine list, I have some knitting things and sewing things, but but it is scary. <laughs> I have no idea when I'm gonna do this, but I have the fabric, couldn't pass it up. So the last portion of the video, I just wanted to do what I've been reading, liking, enjoying, so you could get to know me a little bit more. I really love this part of other YouTubers and wanted to include it so we could feel like a community, we could start to get to know each other. So, I just finished, with reading, I just finished the Lord of the Ring series. Um, my husband and I, after I've been reading the books, we've been watching the movies, and so I just finished the third one. We haven't watched the third movie yet, but I really enjoyed it. It was, I watched the movies before, before reading all the books, and it was just really hard for me to understand what was going on, all the storylines, the characters, the world. I just, I enjoyed the movies, but I just, it was hard to understand, <laughs> hard for me to follow. So I really wanted to read the books to help with that. And it really did. I was able to get to know the characters more, follow the storylines. But the storylines are a lot different in the movies. At least there's extra storylines. So that's been really funny watching the movies right after finishing the books. I really see it. But it's been really fun. I'm really looking forward to watching the third movie. I'm excited to be done. They were long. But it's been enjoyable. Audiobooks. I don't listen to too many audiobooks. I'm trying to get into audiobooks a little bit more. I like the idea of crafting while not constantly consuming visual media, but I'd like to do like have media in other ways, in other forms while crafting. And so I've been trying audiobooks. I listened to Ready Player One. The book was good. I won't ever read it again. It wasn't my favorite, but it was written well, I think. I've tried to watch the movie after the book. We didn't even get all the way through the movie. It's so different. So different. I just couldn't, couldn't watch it. It was just annoying me. <laughs> so we stopped. The second audiobook was A Man Called Uve. I always thought it was A Man Called Ove, but after listening to the audiobook, I think it's A Man Called Uve. The movie's coming out with Tom Hanks. I love Tom Hanks. And so I wanted to listen to the book. I rented the book through my library and had 21 days to listen to it and did not get through it all the way. I had two hours left and I couldn't, I couldn't like renew it. They took the book away <laughs> and I tried to recheck it out and it was like a over 20 day waiting period. So I don't know what happens at the end of that book, but I'm still going to watch the movie because I enjoyed what I listened to. With TV, my husband and I just finished the third season of The Chosen. Super good. We were, we're a Christian family, so we are really enjoying that series, really enjoying seeing Jesus and the biblical narratives in video form. It just helps to visualize. It helps with scenes that are kind of confusing in the Bible to see it on the screen. We just really been enjoying. I've really been enjoying. So we just watched the third season. It was just released and we watched it. Now that that's over, we have started the third season of Jack Ryan and we enjoy spy type of shows, CIA shows. Uh, it's on Prime and it's good so far. First season was my favorite, but it's definitely still good enough to continue. We're enjoying it. And then as for podcasts, I've really been enjoying the Risen Motherhood podcast. It's a Christian podcast. 
hosted by Laura Whistler and Emily Jensen. But right now they're doing a mini series on grief and motherhood, and I'm just really enjoying it. I'm really learning a lot. There are only two episodes in, but in this season of my life, I'm just learning about fear and anxiety. And so to have this as an additional resource has just been really good. I've really enjoyed it. So I definitely recommend if you're interested in learning more about grief and motherhood. It's from a Christian perspective, but it's really, it's been really helpful. And then as for YouTube channel, uh, the one I'm enjoying the most right now is A Lovely Yarn. I cannot remember her name, but it's been, I just found her in the past couple months and have just loved her. If I could be her friend, I would love, I would love it. I would love to be her friend. She's really sweet. I love her video. I love the, the garments that she makes. They're very beautiful. Yeah, every, every time I get on YouTube and look at my subscriptions, I just hope that she's posted. <laughs> So I highly recommend her channel. Go go look at her. But that's it. Yeah, I this was really fun. I'm su surprised at how fun this was. I was a little nervous, but it was really fun. I plan on doing this at the end of every month, I think. I don't knit fast enough for there to be enough progress for a weekly or even bi-weekly. So I think I'll try this at the end of every month. Leave a comment if you watched this and enjoyed it and uh, introduce yourself. I'd love to virtually meet you through the comments if YouTube recommended my video to you and you clicked on it. <laughs> Subscribe if you want to see more, of course, but it's a lot of fun. I hope to be back soon. Uh, yeah, bye!